Unless you've got this, like, one of those filters over the top. No, 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 no filters. No filters for me. Okay, so uh, the first item on the agenda is the instructions. Okay. Okay, just skip over it and go to, okay. All right. Moving to item number two, I call this to order. Number three, Pledge of Allegiance. Mrs. Stafford, would you lead us please? Thank you. Okay. Item number four, approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. And do I have to ask for discussion or public comment on this? Okay. Do I have any public comment on the agenda, the approval of the agenda? Do I have a motion? Move to approve the agenda. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Comments from student representative. At Las Juntas Elementary, we had a successful fire drill on Friday, September 29th, where we reduced our time by 30 seconds. We had a dine and donate on Thursday, October 5th at Kinders. Thank you to Kinders and our community for the support. Our homecoming theme was Mousetrap, and our students, parents, and teachers had so much fun building our float and being part of the parade. Thursday, October 19th, free bike distribution for our TK, kinder, and first graders. Earthquake drill is on 
October 19th. Fall break, no school on Friday, is October 20th. And Halloween dance on Friday, October 27th. At John Muir Elementary, fifth grade, fifth grade made kindness bees to scatter in our school and home communities. Be kind. Third graders are excited about learning multiplication and division. division. They are also learning about gratitude and writing thank you notes. In art, we are... In art, we drew under the sea pictures and then colored them with watercolors. Thank you to our PTA families and students for building our homecoming float. The theme is, the theme is chess with a highlight of a John Muir Elementary student king and queen being on display. Thank you to our PTA for getting Save Promise Club implemented. Save stands for Students Against Violence Every, Everyone, which is a part of the S Sandy Hook Promise. John Muir Elementary students will talk about concerns and execute kindness in the form of student-led activities and will report to the student council. Tuesday, October 11th is our monthly PBIS slash character counts school assembly. Thursday, October 13th is our monthly fire drill. John Muir Elementary will participate in the great shakeout on October 19th. At John Sweat Elementary, construction is still going strong and the big playground is ready to open any day. Second graders are using a variety of borrowing techniques, working on adding slash subtracting two digit numbers. Fourth grade's classes finished up their first class novel of the year. Carl Ween is on Saturday, October 14th, and the PTA, PTA meeting is on Tuesday, October 10th. At Morello Park Elementary, we had our second color war of the year on Friday, September 29th. A majority of our students were wearing their tie-dye shirts from our fall family event. This time, second and third grade, third grade tied. It was so fun seeing all the grade levels wearing their colors. We had our second coffee with the principal on Friday, September 29th. We received our site fast bridge data and talked about the instructional blocks for ELA and math. A huge shout out to, the, to our MPE PTA who organized and built our homecoming float. We had a fun theme and it was so fun to see so many students and families participating in the parade as well. Thank you for a fun event. On October 10th at 7 p.m. there will be a PTA meeting. Uh, fall makeup picture day is on October 18th. Fall break is October 20th, no school. Color Wars is October 27th and Coffee with, Prince, Coffee with the Principal is October October 27th at 8.30 a.m. Trunk or Treat event is October 28th. At Martinez Junior High, we had, a fun, awesome, we, had a, we had a fun, awesome fall spirit week where the theme of the week was verses, week was verses where students had two options to engage and show their spirit. The week capped off with the bullpups spirit, staff versus student. Additionally, we added more friendly competition with home run versus home room. Those who got the most spirit points throughout the week would be crowned most spirited. We celebrated our compilation of our PBIS rise, respect, include, and su support, and engage. We're all out with three days of lunchtime celebrations, including a fun and spirited filled rally on Friday. A big thank you to our MJHS PTSA student and parent volunteers who helped build show off and represent the MJHS Hungry Hungry Hippos float down Main Street in the homecoming parade. Congratulations to our seventh and eighth grade volleyball teams who have finished in the top four and earned a spot in the league tournaments. They will be competing through the week, seventh grade at MJHS and eighth grade at Stanley Middle School. On October 10th, there will be a Title I parent meeting at 5 p.m. via Google Meet. October 13th is the end of quarter one. October 17th is the PTSA meeting at 6 p.m. in MJHS Staff Lounge. October 20th, there's no school, fall break. October 26th, there is a PTSA Fall Fest, and October 27th is the fall dance. At Alhambra High School, thank you to Ms. Griffin, Ms. Patrick, Ms. Stafford, leadership students, and everyone who helped this week with homecoming. If you had a large role or a small part this week, this week would not have been incredible without you. Thank you so much. This homecoming week was definitely one for the books. We tried something new this year by hosting the rally in the evening. It was great to see families and the community enjoy, 
this special time to celebrate leading up to the parade and game. We raised over $635 in gift cards for custodian and maintenance appreciation and gave them and gave them their cards on Friday. Thank you for your generosity. Congratulations to the AHS Marching Band and Color Guard for placing in the Delta Band Review Saturday morning. Color Guard won fourth place out of 14, and Marching Band placed second in our division. Please check out the bulletin for specific details about the following. Tomorrow, Ms. Gregory is offering college essay assistance in her classroom after school. This Wednesday, October 11th, is a PTSA meeting. Friday the 13th is coffee with the principal. And please save the date for our next SSC meeting on October 26th. At Vicente Martinez, Brioni's Independent Study, Junior Achievement of Northern California sponsored on an all-student assembly where EMT workers presented on how to become an EMT. Both Vicente and Brioni's students were in attendance. The student feedback was positive and they expressed interest, interest in having more speakers. The Soroptimist, the Soroptimist of Martinez began their Dream It, Be It series on Wednesday, October 5th at Vicente, where they facilitate career exploration groups for girls and gender minority students. This seven session groups group helps students and learn help student learn about career options and values, sets goals, handle obstacles and stressors, and connect and connects them to valuable resources in our community. Each week, two to three women from the Martinez Soroptimist group will come to support the will come to support the group and serve as mentors for our students. Vicente has started a student council slash leadership group. Special thanks. Special thanks goes out to Jimmy Kucha, Naya Pineda, and Rain Watson for creating the leadership team. At Martinez Adult Education, uh, they had another student complete their high school diploma. We had two graduates so far for the year. Twelve new students started the pharmacy technician training program on September 25th, and free computer basics classes have completed the students have completed, and students are moving on to free classes on using Google Apps. These classes are offered both day and evening. On Wednesday, October 18th, 50 students will take a bus from Martinez Adult Education to Diablo Valley College. They will tour several career training programs, have lunch, and learn about enrolling at DVC for the spring. Wednesday, October 25th, Martinez Adult Education will host a fall festival for our students and guests from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The festival will have arts and crafts, games, treats, and several community resources, including the library, CalFresh, Rubicon programs, and more. Saturday, October 25th, October 21st, sorry, seven students have registered to take the high set high school equivalency exam. Thank you. Is there anything you wanted to add? Sorry, my mic wouldn't turn on. The night rally was such a hit. I've never seen so many more people who wanted to participate in a rally. Um, I think it'll be really good for next year. And the homecoming game, we won, I believe it was 74-14, a little under three hours, but it was worth the game. Um, and con congratulations to the varsity football team. All right, thank you. Okay, our next item is employee organization reports. Do we have any employee organization reports? Okay. And number seven is comments from the PTA. Do we have any comments from the PTA? All right, moving right along. Number eight, correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? There's no correspondence this week. Okay. Number nine, staff reports. The first item is the superintendent's report. Okay, so um, today's professional development program offered a variety of sessions to each certificated employee. Elementary, elementary teachers had a four course wheel that um, each one attended and they consisted of two two hour sessions and two 45 minute sessions and they rotated through their sessions at different times in the day. The primary focus for the elementary class, classrooms from TK3 was literacy and for fourth and fifth was math. That meant that at least two of the four sessions for each of those levels uh, pertain to their focus area. Counselors and psychologists completed sessions on uh, suicide prevention, mindful life, McKinney-Vento, 
um, and had some collaboration time built into their day. The specialists um, at elementary level and PE um, and such at the secondary level um, attended sessions on SEL, UDL, and equity. Our secondary teachers had a three-spoke wheel with either a math or non-math focus. The non-math teachers focused on UDL, which is Universal Design for Learning, and literacy, while the math folks were introduced to the new California mathematics framework by the UC Davis Math Project instructors. Both Alhambra and Vicente were also able to work on WASC and or in, attend an equity session for the last uh, session of the day. Our special education teachers attended sessions on literacy, UDL, and IEP compliance curriculum, uh, compliance curriculum and behavior management. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there were over 29 certificated absences today, so not all staff will have had the exposure to these very important trainings. Informal teacher feedback from today was positive, and the sessions ended at three, with our teachers leaving with practical strategies to use in their classroom, especially from the math and the literacy. Our next PD training is in March and will continue to offer sessions fo focused on these very important topics. I'd like to thank, um, let's see, Amy, Janelle, Yadira, and Amber from our Ed Services Department, and Betty Lynn and Ann Kim from our Special Ed Department, SELPA, U UC Davis Project, West Ed, and Artosas. I think I got them all, right? and the County Office of Ed, there you go, for their help in, in supporting um, by presenting or, or presenting with uh, members of our district and um, putting together today with these kind of amount of sessions that were involved and the different people and the rotating schedules and people moving 200, over 200 people moving from place to place. It, it takes a lot of work and I recognize that and I really appreciate the efforts put in by all to make today a successful day. So, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, board members and superintendent Rossi. I will be piggybacking off of uh, what um, superintendent Rossi just shared about our professional development but I wanna take you back to um, our focus areas for the year. So just a reminder, literacy TK3, math four through ninth, and then overall we're looking at universal design for learning for all. Our August staff PD included some of the topics that we also had for today which was universal design for learning. Uh, West Ed came and gave a very um, in-depth overview of universal design for learning on our August date to all staff members. We also had Keenan Safe School modules that um, our classified staff members were able to work on throughout the day in August. And then we had CSIG come and support with Crisis Prevention Institute training which um, our paraprofessionals were able to engage in. On, in August, we also had creative curriculum, which was done by teaching strategies, and we also had Komochi training. As Helen shared, um, today we had lots of things going on, many moving parts, and I'm hopeful that we we're able to engage in a lots of learning throughout the day. So our AM sessions were universal design for learning. Uh, all of our staff members were able to attend one of the two hour sessions in the morning. We also had UC Davis Math Project come in and with a math focus to work with our math teachers. We had literacy from the Contra Costa County Office of Education as well as social emotional learning. Our PM sessions, um, I don't wanna re repeat what Helen shared, but we had a lot of our staff members were able to support in offering different breakout sessions in the afternoon. And I, again, wanna share a big thank you to everyone who put in work um, to make today be very successful for all. 
and hopefully very relevant to our certificated staff members. So we had a variety of literacy topics, math topics, IEP compliance, behavior management. Um, we had preschool in a breakout session. We had our uh, kindergarten teachers in a different breakout session. So we were able to um, use Alhambra High School to our advantage with the amount of space and the amount of rooms that we needed. And then looking ahead to March, we're gonna continue with Universal Design for Learning, uh, Literacy, UC Davis Math Project, and then we're going to start to blend in improvement science as well. And so as I already told Helen this afternoon, or once we got back here this afternoon, I said, okay, I already have ideas for March. So thinking about how we're going to support um, people's choice for the, different, um, for the different sessions and then also leverage what um, assets we have within our district as well as our county office, as well as our partnerships with West Ed and UC Davis Math Project. That was my high overviews. Oh, any questions? question um can you speak to the um how the the course offerings or the classes that are offered is that um kind of done by just administration or is it kind of collaboration with the the mea and the and and then how do teachers are teachers just allowed to kind of select which ones they want to attend or or how does that that process occur so so far it's been different both days so i came in in july and august was pretty much set so we, we knew um, that a whole day of universal design for learning is what was going to happen in August. Um, I had wanted to offer choice sessions for today, but logistically with the amount of presenters that we had available, we had to um, lock people into specific sections based on um, their content area. So for example, PE teachers, we wanted to ensure they weren't sitting through a math content area for two hours because that could be a waste of time for them. And so we wanted to make sure that we had relevant topics for them. Um, with March, we've already booked many more presenters so that we can have more flexibility. And I'm hopeful in offering a menu out to people so that they can make choice choices for their different um, sections of the day when we move into March. That way, um, there's there can be a higher level of engagement because then they're able to pick what, what they want to learn about or what they want to go more in depth about. And so we've already asked West Ed if they can have an additional trainer come in that day so that we can have different universal design for learning options. We've spoke to the county as well to continue to offer equity and social emotional learning. And so really ensuring that we have enough staff members that we can offer some flexibility and some choice for our staff members rather than saying, okay, here's your agenda. These are the three sections or these are the four you're going to. So I think that was um, also a learning experience for me coming in being able to offer that choice because I was hopeful that we could have done it today. And just with time restraints and the availability of staffing, a lot of people in this area have today as a professional development day. So that also limited our ability to off, but like pull more people from the county level as well. And, and the topics are, um, in our, are based upon our LCAP goals. So that's where they come from. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, our next staff report is from Joe Gangler about the new district website. Sorry. Good evening. Had to share all my stuff. Usually I'm just doing it and someone else is talking. So, um, yeah, so well, uh, good evening. And uh, we're going to just go over just a few things on the website. I request the board to have a presentation for this evening regarding the subject. Um, so I just wanted to give you just sort of a breakdown of how we got here. Um, so as you are aware, we were notified in May that our website vendor was going to shut down. And they were going to shut down July 1st of this year, uh, 2023. 
So uh, we had to have a quick evaluation. We looked at four vendors, um, various vendors that we've seen from other districts and stuff that provide websites. Um, and when I was reviewing those vendors, I started noticing that also these vendors create communication platforms that are integrated uh, beyond just your typical website uh, setup. Um, so at that time, I pretty much decided that we needed to bring a communications platform in scope for this review. Um, so when we did that, we reviewed and we selected Parent Square because we liked the integration with Aries, our student information system. Uh, we liked that it was a well-established platform that many districts in, uh, in this near area also use. Um, and we had firsthand knowledge of administrators uh, such as Dr. Scudero regarding um, his usage of Parent Square, um, as well as uh, with a couple of our principals from, that have used it in previous districts. So we had some real life feedback of the effectiveness of the platform. Um, so, you know, and at the end of the day, we, we really felt that it was important that this would enhance the communication ability of this district um, and bringing everything into one platform, making it easier for us to send updates and, and permeate through all of our ways that we inform our community, um, whether it's just the city of Martinez proper or our district as a whole. So that's where we came to today. So you see our website here that we're sharing here on um, the screen. I elected not to do a presentation. I felt that a website could speak for itself. So we we're just going to go over some of the important items of, of the site to point out some of the enhancements that occurred uh, when we uh, upgraded this platform and created these synergies and integrations. So the first thing I want to kind of define for you is uh, Parent Square has two components to it. So I'll refer to them as Parent Square Communications, which is what you would see on our app, uh, email, or texting when we're actually sending information to you. And then there's Parent Square Smart Sites, which is our websites. And those are the two. They're all under the same umbrella, but they're definitely they're two different products. Um, so we want to differentiate between those two. Um, so the first thing we did is we established permanent web addresses for each school. So in the prior system, if you had gone to our websites, it would have been, you know, lasuntas.schoolloop.blahblahblahca something. And that was because uh, it was a direct link to the vendor's page. Uh, that created some havoc for our parents because when we switched sites, those links didn't work anymore. So one of the biggest things we did was sort of a marketing perspective. Um, what is the easiest way that we can maintain a website uh, so that parents always know this is the place to go um, and it's trusted and it works with, you know, uh, web addresses they're used to seeing us at. And martinezusd.net was our district homepage. So now what you see is, uh, for example, Alhambra is ahs.martinezusd.net. Um, Martinez Junior High is mjhs.martinezusd.net. So you can see um, that we're creating a, you want users to look at your environment your community and see that they know that anything that came from Martinez USD is going to come from martinezusd.net or martinez.k12.ca.us. It's very important to establish just a minor little thing, but it's very important for users to see that as a trusted resource. So you can see here, like you have, we, we highlighted right here. So we have our web address. Um, we also did a lot of legwork with Google because all once we switched new websites over, everyone would say, hey, where's Martinez Adult Education? And they'd see the top link and it would go to somewhere in the oblivion because that website didn't work anymore. So we worked, did a lot of work with Google to force it to look at our website so that uh, the community could use search results and get to the place they need to go. And this website helped with that because it better organized our information. Google caught all that stuff really quickly. We were up and running in about 72 hours. We were starting to see very high used web pages start showing up in Google. So that was like a high level marketing thing that this website kind of helped with, it kept our data organized and much more presentable. Um, the more obvious thing that you saw on our websites is the website got refreshed. It's less cluttered. Um, it, there's a lot more uh, space and usage. We tried to organize our menus by audiences uh, for our schools. So you'll see in some of our schools, uh, we can go up here to our schools menu and we can go to John Muir, for example. And here again, jme.martinezusd.net, keeping the consistency. Um, we have information on our school 
So things that are generic about the school, like the mission statement, our principal's message, um, attendance information. And you can see here what we are reflecting here in our audiences. So we have staff members, we have students, we have parents, the community, and then we have our Say Something link that appears everywhere so that people have a quick way of, of going to that resource so they can report things or you know, make sure they're feeling safe and getting the right information. And when you scroll down, we try to keep uh, you know, very important items here in our menus, very consistent on every one of our websites. Uh, the school calendar, if you wanted to enroll, we take you right into our enrollment system. Um, school board information so the community can get, you know, the agendas and everything very quickly. And then, of course, a very heavily used tool in the district, Aries. So it sends our parents and uh, community out there. Uh, we have localized news posts here for John Muir, and we'll talk about how these work in a few minutes. Um, and then we kind of take some consistent messaging from the district, whether it's our school or district's mission. Um, and then here we have all the upcoming events in a calendar for John Muir, and we'll go over how that works as well. And then just some requisite stuff in the footer um, and some other things here, like their contact information and address and such. But you can see, you know, all of our sub menus here include information that would be relevant to um, the audience that's looking at it. So students we have you know, counseling information. Um, this only works at the Google site, so you have to have an account. Um, but our counselor there has made a, you know, amazing, you know, Google sites website, talks about information for students to receive counseling. Um, you know, parents, we have our PTA, the school site council, um, tutorials on how to use Google Classroom so parents can help their students uh, function and work with their homework and such. Um, so we continue to, you know, review our website. It's, you know, websites tend to you know, get clogged up with a lot of information. So like us at the district office are continually reviewing our websites and trying to consolidate information, make it relevant and current. Um, and what helped is this platform is a lot easier to work with um, to help uh, our staff be able to update that information. Let's see here, um, ADA compliance. Uh, so for uh, our members of our community that have uh, disabilities, whether it's, uh, you know, vision in, uh, impairment, hearing impairment, um, this new website took uh, accessibility in mind when it looked at that. And uh, as a public organization, we do have to comply with the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, and there's actually enhanced uh, law in the state of California that we have to follow as well. And it helps, uh, example, for vision impaired um, users, they can use programs that are called screen readers. And they'll read the screen and it will know based on how our website's built out and audibly tell that user uh, you know, navigation menu, home, our school, staff, um, and our older website, while compliant, wasn't easy to use because it didn't use a lot of those modern standards. So this update just, you know, brought us more into, you know, being inclusive and equitable to all of our community to make sure that they can um, participate with us just like everyone else. So I just wanted to point that out a little bit. Um, one of the bigger features that we have, and I'll go back here to the district office real quick. So uh, this little header up here you see on the top is on every one of our uh, school websites. So you just have one click and you're just going right back to the district website. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was the calendar. So our calendar is actually integrated with our Google calendars here in the school district. So each school has its own Google calendar. Uh, most were already established and we sort of kind of grabbed them and brought them into this uh, website for a feed. So what we're doing is instead of schools having to post in so many different places, you know, upcoming events, whether it's the homecoming rally or the homecoming parade, uh, one person or a couple people at Alhambra High School, for example, can just post in their Google Calendar, which they already do. And that information immediately goes to our website, immediately goes into Parent Square Communications so that parents can use their phone, get on their app and see upcoming events at their particular school. On the district level, it shows the every event that's coming in from our schools. So we can come over here, put the wrong menu, of course. So this is a running calendar of everything that's happening in our schools. So um, it uses sometimes it has different color codes depending on the calendar, but you can see anything that's going on at our schools on any given day. And of course, this is. Uh, you know, as accurate as our schools are publishing that information, and they've been doing an excellent job of getting that information out. 
And you can click on any one of these and you can get information that takes you right to that calendar. So if you wanted to get to the John Muir PTA meeting, you know, it's Tuesday, October 17th from, what is that, 6 p.m.? Yeah, 6 p.m. to 6.30. So this allows, um, instead of these calendars being, you know, only on the school's website and only there, it broadcasts it to the entire district. That event is also in Parent Square Communications, and we only had to post it once. So that was a big deal. It makes it easier for people to share their events. I, I would like to add something. I've asked that all the schools begin their calendar events with their initials so that when you look at them, you should be, see LJE, AHS. It's easier to find what school it is. And the other feature that I've talked to the board about, which I'm not sure if they've had time to look at, is the list feature. You can take and, and make it a little more clear day by day of everything that's on that day. You can flip between the calendar view and the list. And this data is, is current as of the moment you load the page. It's not you know downloaded every day and presented. If someone posted an event right now, um, depending on your web browser settings, it would be either instant or a couple minutes and you would see that update. Um, parents can actually subscribe to these calendars. They're public facing, so you could add it to your, your uh, mobile device and just make it part of your calendar. Or again, it's, it's actually in our Parent Square app as well. So you can uh, participate in all those events pretty, pretty easily. Um, so that was a big feature for us. We never really had, you know, we had a calendar on the old website, but it was kind of hit or miss whether, you know, the events were there because it was, it was difficult. It wasn't a matter of, you know, people not wanting to do it. It just took so many steps. And I think that helped um, with our current website the, that we have today is, again, um, taking feedback and um, trying to make it easier for staff to use the program. If it's approachable and easier, they're more apt to update it and uh, keep it current. Um, another thing that we had with our integrations with uh, Parent Square Communications is our news section here. So not only can we post you know, new stuff from our website that are you know just specific to the website, but these are actually linked to Parent Square. So when we go into our communications platform um, and we want to send a message to the entire district, we have the ability to check a box and it will also post that on the website. So again, we're adding more avenues for communication uh, with the same language so that, you know, the website isn't different than what you saw on Parent Square. We can even check a box and post that straight to our Facebook page, which we uh, brought back to life. And uh, uh, Ms. Ayette is basically uh, posting and keeping that all up to date. So you've been seeing a lot of activity with photos and events that are going on um, within the school district. Um, so this just works hand in hand. And if you click on any of these news items, uh, we'll get to read more here, it takes you right to a separate page that has that post and more information on it. So again, when we're communicating, it's very important to have consistent messaging, no deviation of the message that's going out because it was in one platform and we typed it differently or whatever. It's literally the same message going out, which helps uh, when we're informing the community, especially in emergencies. Um, so it, it takes, this feed will take the last uh, four most recent posts, and that's consistent on every one of our school websites. So uh, we can go over to Alhambra High School. Alhambra is very active in their uh, use of this platform. Um, they use it for uh, the sports teams. Coaches communicate with their sports teams. Would, you know, it's very important that they try to move over that way because the communication is in a monitored environment. Uh, so we can ensure that you know everyone's being safe and communicating effectively. Um, I'm sure why I did, oh, I did click on it; that would help. Um, so you can see here they have their posts. So we have something like for me when we had our little internet outage a couple days uh, weeks ago, um, the career and college fair newsletter, uh, September newsletter here. So folks that are looking to go to the next step beyond their high school uh, diploma, they can see this information from Ms. Collins. Um, so we have all sorts of things going on here. Here's their calendar. Uh, you know, in Alhambra, we took a different approach on how they wanted to work their website. Uh, you can see we do still have a lot of our audience-based menus, um, but we are uh, bringing out a little bit more uh, important items, whether it's counseling in the Career and College Center, very important in athletics. So, um, yeah, so we have that is, is that integration has been very nice and helpful. Um, so as far as the communications platform, we're able to um, send messages out very quickly um, and efficiently. 
And, you know, you've seen that as, as most of you are all parents in our district, you've seen through the various messages we've sent out, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, district level news or even our board agendas, we use Parent Square to uh, put that content together and send it out to the parents um, and the community. Um, parents are able to comment directly back on our posts if those comments are enabled in a private manner. It's not a public comment. So when you go in there and you're, you have a question, like we see this at Alhambra every now and then, parents just asking additional questions and clarity for an event, they can comment on those posts and the person that made that post will get a notification that someone commented on it. And those comments are uh, kept private, so they're one-to-one -one between you as the parent and the individual. So you don't have to feel you know, that you, you can't say something because the whole community is gonna see that. So that's very helpful so the parents understand that they can have those types of conversations to get those that clarity that they desire. Uh, school staff can publish, you know, all sorts of things. What this Parent Square did was consolidate a lot of apps that were kind of being used in the district into one. So for example, um, I've seen um, uh, teachers use it for permission slips where they can, uh, or notify, hey, here's the permission slip document, you can download it, send it to us. So parents are on their mobile device, they're able to, uh, download that document and present a copy back to the school. Very easy to work with. Um, I've seen requests for volunteers in the classroom. So uh, schools have been, hey, we have some openings for parents to come on in the classroom and provide help. Um, Parent Square handles that all within the same application. Uh, they could take anonymous polls. Um, and uh, one of the features that I thought was really nice is uh, teachers could actually go in and set up uh, their parent-teacher conferences for their appointments. So they could say, hey, I'm gonna have X amount of appointments today at 15 minute blocks. And um, parents can go in and make those appointments. And when they make the appointment, the time disappears. So they don't get any double bookings. And it's a very efficient way for, again, uh, teachers or the district to effectively communicate and uh, work with their community. Um, so effectively what we've done is try to create a one-stop shop for community and communication. And this has helped us do that. Um, and another, another enhancement we started out with Alhambra High School with this is we have, you heard of Parent Square. Well, we actually have Student Square as well. And this is an app for our students to participate on. Again, only a one-way conversation between the staff and the students. We don't have lateral communication between student and student, but it does allow for the schools, like I mentioned earlier, coaches can communicate with their teams. They can make a a team, a group called uh, Alhambra High School Cross Country or something. And they can add their students into there and they can communicate with their, their student athletes. Um, we have clubs using this at Alhambra High School so they can communicate with their club members. And this is again, the, the club sponsor, faculty sponsor, um, working with the students. Um, we've enabled that at Alhambra High School, uh, Vicente, and uh, just recently with the junior high and they're sending communications and notices to students. Hey, there's a event next week, you know, make sure you bring X, Y, and Z. So again, it's enhancing this communication uh, across all of our uh, constituency groups, whether it's parents, the community, or students, and, and staff as well. All of our staff are in the system as well. Um, so we've used it to, it's from our perspective with staff, we've used it to communicate uh, during emergency events uh, that have occurred in the last few months. Um, you know, each time we send this notification out, we, we get feedback to make sure, oh, we didn't, that didn't work out well. How can we make that better? Oh, we missed this group. How can we make that better? So we're continuing to improve and make sure that we're effectively communicating with staff. Uh, and finally, a feature that we'll be bringing on in the future is where we have the ability to create community groups. And these are groups that are accessible outside of the Martinez Unified School District student and staff audiences. So examples we can use are uh, neighborhood groups like um, Las Juntas. We can create a neighborhood group for those neighbors that are around our school and they can subscribe to it. And then we can send them pertinent updates, whether it's, you know, we're doing construction at the site next week and you may hear some noise or, so again, another way to engage with the community. Um, it's a self sign up setup. So you can't, you know, we don't know who our neighbors are so we can, you know, maybe, you know, send them a message or something. Hey, if you go to this link, you can join this and get news about, you know, the school site as it relates to you as just a neighbor or community member. Um, this could also be used for communicating with PTAs. They can go in and, and join uh, this. There's no cost or anything. They just go to a link and give us an email and we can communicate with them in that group. We've been sort of testing this, you know, when you deal with things 
when you're in the greater community, you want to make sure you're doing this the right way and make sure that we're understanding how we're communicating with that audience, what's relevant content to them, um, and making sure we're being a good steward of, or a good neighbor uh, for most of our schools. Uh, and then, you know, finally, I think uh, the platform has been a pretty good success. Uh, we've received feedback from our school board as well, as you guys are all parents and have kind of witnessed this firsthand. Um, we feel like we've had some a pretty positive experience with this platform. Um, you know, it, it, it's increased you know school engagement, and it continue will it will continue to do that. Um, and you know, we have the ability to communicate to so many constituency groups and enhance you know how we are part of this community. So um, you know, we'll continue to look at the usage and how we can improve in the future. There's always room, and especially in communications, there's always room to improve in in any area. Um, so we're just going to continue looking at it. We work with schools uh, to help develop their website a little bit more and see what kind of content we can bring in. Um, you know, and like I said, we're just kind of scratching the surface. Usually, you know, you kind of plan out these deployments and you get the, you know, you figure out how you want to do it. And, you know, the transition was a little rough to say the least, but, you know, I think it's uh, coming out and coming and working well. So um, that's everything I had to talk about the websites. If you had specific questions or things you'd like me to point out or clarify, I'd be happy to do so. I want to highlight you kind of glazed over the fact that I think you had about a month and a half to put this all together or get it rolled out. So a, a huge, you know, good job. Thank you. Um, it's I know there's been some little bit of learning curves, but the uh, your efforts and getting this uh, switched over from the old uh, platform to the new one is has been huge and i think it'd be a huge success i really do love the consistency from the school sites and and you know having being a parent of going to the elementary to the junior high to the to the high school this is really nice not trying to have to relearn a, a web page on on each site so thank you very much for that and this just really is i get for me really exciting from a from an engineering perspective because it's so well laid out it's very uh, logical it's very uh, easy to access provides a ton of information. Um, one question, two, a couple of questions I had for, you talked about um, being able to put up all the events. I am noticing that there's still a lot of sporting events and, and activities that's not being utilized. Is that up to um, Mr. Ortola to, to put up the athletic director or is it the individual coaches? If it's the individual coaches, some of those coaches aren't on staff and so they're, so can you speak, is it just a, again, we're getting better and, and having to slowly engage and, and uh, utilize the platform? Um, I would say, because we mostly kind of left it up to the schools and how they wanted to approach it, because we didn't want them to redefine the process of how they're getting their events in. Um, the end goal was not to uh, create more work unintentionally. So um, if we are missing events, I can just, you know, schedule some time with AHS and kind of figure out how and where the area is. Is it something on my end that we're not attaching ourselves to a calendar that we that they're using regularly? Um, so, and that's probably just a simple thing of just, you know, coming together, figuring out how we can enhance that communication. Uh, you know, I know the AHS staff has like been going, you know, really gun ho on this website, really in an amazing way. They're finding ways to reorganize things, especially in the parent square, they've been stuck, uh, communication side of the house. They've been really pushing it really hard in there. So, um, yeah, it's just, I, you know, if they're, if we're missing some things and I've, you know, that's uh, an easy thing to fix. Yeah. So we can go and I'll work with Mr. Artola and see how we can, uh, where that uh, gap is that we can help out with. This, and, the sporting events are not on the, the district events. They would overpower all of the district events um, on the combined page. Are you talking about? No, I was looking at the, even the oh, very specific. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you. definitely want, you know, school-based events to be very prominent on the school sure. website. So that's something we can look at. The other thing I would ask is obviously with the uh, coordination meetings we have with the city, I think this is a great way to, to bridge the communication with the city's websites and you know, being, being the good neighbor, community member, and you know, and having that information here and sharing it with them. So if we can pencil that for the next city uh, coordination meeting. Yeah. So I have two questions mm -hmm. um, regarding the event calendar. Um, how far out in advance are we asking the schools to schedule events? And are we limiting how many events are scheduled per day? Um, recently, there was one day where there were three events that I wanted to attend at the same time. 
and it was I, I couldn't make any of them. But I think you know um, if can you can you click on the event calendar to see like how many days we have events going on and how many days we don't. Um, like I know at work, once we have an event scheduled, like that day is blocked off and then you have to sign up for other days. So is there a way for us to distribute activities so that we can actually attend more activities rather than have three or four at the same time and we can't make them? Probably hard to do on a lot of activities that would fall in. So say, um, well, don't. Halloween's just saying it's Halloween, I think. It's on the 31st. Are you in November? Can you go back to October for a minute? So I can, I'm looking at the same one. So, you know, PSAT testing is going to fall on the same day as other things. Um, are you talking like if they have a, a dance or if they have a, a, a coffee with the principal or so on and so forth? Recitals, um, family events, um, sporting meetings well it well sports are going to always they, they go by league schedule so we can't move the sport events but we can move like the meeting they should all be looking at calendars but i don't think that they're going to be able to do it all the time so for instance if they have a coaching meeting set on the 20th and pta on friday the 20th i'm just given a date and pta decides that they want to do a, um, a dance, you know, father-daughter dance or something on the same day, they're going to go with their volunteers and their own calendar for their school because every school has their own set events that already might be in there. So there might be something going on in that day. It, they can look at it and use it, and I will mention that to principals to say when you're scheduling, try to, you know, avoid days that have a lot of things on it, but I don't think we'll be able to limit it to two or three in a day because – events are going to happen. Um, you know, the, the Halloween parade, is if they still have those, are going to happen on the day before Halloween or on Halloween if it's a, at the day. Things like that are going to happen. But I think it's too difficult from working on a school site to try to make sure that the junior high doesn't schedule anything on the same days as the four elementaries, the middle school, the adult school, Vicente, and Brioni's. Um, it, it, it can be challenging, but they can certainly look at it. So are we asking them to schedule events four weeks, four weeks in advance? Six weeks a lot of things advance? are scheduled like for the first semester and then scheduled for the second semester. A lot of things are scheduled as they come up, as ASB comes up with different activities and so on and so forth, maybe a month or a month or two ahead of time, depending on the situation. And some things are scheduled um, in the year before, and before we leave for the summer. They come up with a lot of events that they put on there. So everything's done at a different time, depending on what the what the event is. Can you click on November real quick? Okay, so we have Thanksgiving. So nothing there, but then we have like the 8th open, the 16th, 17th, the 30th open. So, I mean, there's potential for there not to be a lot of overlap because there's stuff not going on on certain days, the nothing on the 6th. So I think definitely asking them to look at the calendars in advance and seeing if there's open days to disperse. I can ask more. them, but I can't guarantee that it's going to happen. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I don't want to guarantee. As so I definitely... said, I'll ask them before they schedule to kind of look at the calendar and see to try not to overlap as much as possible. But there is no guarantee that it's not going to happen. It's just too hard with eight schools. It, it's difficult. I understand. But planning. Yeah. But they can try. They can take yeah. a look. Thank you. So I was just going to say, um, great presentation. Um, I actually love the calendar. I love the parent square. I think you've done a great job. Um, I did have one question. Um, you said if they get a notification, like in parent square, and they want to respond, um, it only goes back to that one person. Do they know that? I never heard that before. Um, so, so when they comment, it'll have a little lock on their comment uh, that basically is sort of like a privacy like icon, I guess. and. Um, and yeah, so mo if parents don't know that, we can definitely do a better job of communicating that out. But yeah, if they go, if a comment is enabled on a post, um, they are able to comment back and only uh, like school administrators would be able to see that, that have that access and they could respond. Uh, parents can also direct message. 
So in the Parent Square app, there's a little sort of direct message uh, link, and you'll be able to go in there and you can message. You know, um, you know. Usually, I think usually it'll show the site principal, and then it'll give them an email message that someone you know is, hey, someone's directly messaging you. Did you want to uh, reply back? And it's sort of like you know web-based texting. It's just between you and that parent, but within Parent Square. So yeah, we can uh, provide some guidance to uh, parents if they want to engage more on those posts or if they have you know pertinent important questions. Yeah, I just I just think that I didn't know that, and I think mm -hmm. that would be kind of a nice feature, okay. um, just for people to know. But I think everything you know, like I said, I really like the website. I think you've done a great job, and uh, I do use it a lot more. And I like that you have the phone numbers on there. So if you're calling for an absence or like that's all in one place, so um, great job. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback too about the website and Parent Square. And so, are like the AHS page, Joe? Is that your drone that took that photo of the over? No, the um, overview. That now? was the facilitron, <laughs> facilitron drone. Okay. I didn't have my drone yet then, uh, but I do have plans to go do some aerials of some of the uh, schools to replace those pictures pretty soon. So. Uh, thank you. So twice a year, we meet as the Citizens Oversight Committee to review our two bond measures, Measure K and Measure R. We have a seven-member group. Um, I make eight in that. Um, and so we just recently met. That was on the 3rd um, from 530 to 6. So what I've attached to the board document is just the agenda so you can see kind of what we look at here. It is a formal meeting. Uh, we do have a president. We have a secretary. And we have a representative that speaks to the board to talk about the results. Um, they're not our representative isn't able to make it tonight, so I'm going to be filling in as the representative, um, explaining about what we talked about and what the result of our meeting was. Um, so again, uh, in front of you, you have the agenda for the evening. So we go over just like uh, we do in this board meeting over the Pledge of Allegiance over our agenda. Um, where we get into is you notice that we talked about a notice of completion and mind you all of the things you see here the board has already seen in advance. So this is after the fact after you've approved contracts after you approved notice of completions we go back to this oversight committee and we um, talk to them to make sure that all the work that we completed was responsible towards the, the original language of the bond measure in case. So essentially they're saying this project was a part of the bond and we see no fault in it. So as you go through um, measure R, we listed all of those um, contracts um, that have gone through in the last year um, for that. Uh, measure R is currently working to build John Sweat and will continue to work on Morello Park. Um, measure K is our older bond measure and it is still um, being used to fund projects at the high school and at the junior high. And you'll notice that um, some of the summer project list you're going to see throughout here. Um, in the end, the committee did determine that all of our projects listed uh, in this document and what we've done in the last year do meet the language of both Measure K and Measure R. We also spent some time talking about just overall summer projects that were outside of this because they kind of start blending together. You might use bond money, you might use maintenance money, you may use deferred maintenance. So all of it comes together, we talked about it. Um, I think they were impressed with how diligent we have been as a district to make sure that our facilities are, are running and in good shape um, and to be able to use the taxpayers' mon money wisely. Um, they are excited about what we're gonna do next um, as the money starts to fade away there's still some more projects we're going to do and we explained to them that we are currently in the process of building that next year's summer project list and we'll be able to present that probably early spring as we start working through that um, overall we had um, five people attend so just enough to make quorum um, as you know sometimes it's tough to get um, people to attend those evening meetings when they have lots of other family commitments and things that they want to do um, I think some of them are bocce ball players. I didn't ask, but I think that was also uh, maybe a league night. So I'm not sure if that had an impact, but it sounded like it may have. Um, all in all, we had a really good meeting. Um, we were very responsive. They were happy that our website, which we just got a chance to see, has a lot of our bond information. Um, they do want us to put more and more pictures on there. And so we're going to endeavor to do so 
and to use that as a way to communicate to our families really good things. I think what I've heard the last three meetings that I've conducted or been a part of is that they think we're doing a pretty good job and that we have to do a better job of showcasing that so that the voting public will understand that one, their funds are currently being used well and it will potentially entice um, future um, electors to choose any bond measures or parcel taxes that we put in front of them in the future. And that's the report tonight. I think that's a great point. We had a great presentation last meeting with some really nice pictures from the summer projects. And I hate to give you more work, Helen, but is, or maybe Andy, this is work for you. I don't know. Um, Sounds like it's maybe we direction. could have like a little, uh, you know, item in one of the upcoming newsletters about those types of things with some pictures because it, it was great at the meeting but as we know not everybody watches the meeting or attends so well if you were to go on our website right now i hope i'm right i did ask for it to get published um, but the presentation from the board meeting is listed on there in our bond page great um, with some other pictures and items as well okay um, and if you notice in the lobby as you walk by we're continually updating I, um, the lobby yeah um, so you can see those I did. pictures thank you okay any Item number 10, public comments. Do we have anybody on Google Meet? No, okay. Okay, so under government code 54954.3, members of the public have the right to address the board on any matter with the boards within the board's jurisdiction. Should I ask if we have public comment before I read all of this or should I just read it? Just read it, okay. <laughs> However, the board may not take action on any non-agenda item. And individual speakers will be allowed three minutes to address the board. 20 minutes have been allocated for this portion of the agenda. Additional time is allowed at the end of the meeting if there was not enough time to speak during public comments. Please see Google Meet public comment protocols listed above, but we don't have anybody on Google Meet. To comply with the Brown Act, the board may listen to comments from the speakers, but can neither discuss nor take action on the issues presented. Members of the board are very limited in their response to statements or questions by persons commenting on items not on the agenda. Board members or staff may, one, ask clarif clarifying questions, two, make a brief announcement, three, make a brief report on his or ho her own activities, Four, refer a matter to staff or other resources for information. Five, request that staff report back on a matter at a subsequent meeting. Or six, direct staff to place the matter on a future agenda. Edu education code 54954.2. Okay. Do we have any public comments? No. Okay. Moving, <laughs> moving right along. Item number 11 is the consent calendar. Approval of the consent calendar means that all items listed here under are adopted by a single motion unless a member of the board or the superintendent requests that any such item be removed from the consent calendar and voted upon separately. There are no changes to the consent calendar. Okay. Any questions or comments? I'd just like to recognize the the donations um, and this this month is or this week is you know pretty extensive there's a, over ten thousand dollars being donated by um, various members of the community PTAs uh, you know parent organizations as well as individual parents uh, I just think it speaks to the generosity and, and commitment to the district so I just wanted to recognize that thank you any public comment on the consent calendar Okay, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Forgot okay. to ask student vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Marisol. Student vote. Aye. Thank you. Okay, motion passes. Okay, sorry. Sorry, bear with me. Learning here. I'll get it right the next time. Okay, number 12 is discussion items, and our first item is approval of Stagecraft 2 course presented by Amy Espinoza. Thank you. Um, I wanted to present that we had 
our first curriculum advisory council meeting uh, on September 20th, 2023. And the group happily agreed um, that I should move forward with presenting um, Stagecraft II as a new CTE course. This would be an elective class and presents an additional CTE pathway option for our students. This is a capstone course. So this is the second year for a CTE production and managerial arts pathway. And I wanted to share a little bit of background information and um, also thank Sarah Stafford. Uh, she's here this evening. She presented to the Curriculum Advisory Council as well. But to give a little bit more background information, which you will find in the supporting document, um, they have determined that there is student interest in the second year of stage craft. And currently we are offering two sections of the concentrator course stage craft one. And so we do have students who are interested in expanding their learning in that area. In, um, in the second year of Stagecraft, the, um, this class, the skills and understandings demonstrated in Stagecraft 1 are further developed. Knowledge and skills in set construction and working with stage lighting and sound move away from being demonstrated in classroom projects to being applied to the larger productions being produced on the main stage by the department. This class is designed to teach the art of theatrical design, implementation, and production to students who are interested in furthering their skills in set construction and decoration, lighting, sound properties, company, and stage management and arts administration. Each student will be able to demonstrate a mastery of the secondary principles of technical production work. And this course provides a bridge between practical skills and design concepts. And it gives many students a foray into artistic expression that are interested in modes of expression outside of performance. And so next um, board meeting, I will be asking for the board's approval in um, the course for stage craft two to begin in fall of 2024 Alhambra High School. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Can you tell me like what the students are doing in Stagecraft One right now? Because I know there's a play coming up, right? Yeah. In fact, tomorrow we're starting to paint our stage and our set pieces for Our Town, which is opening in about three weeks. Um, so. Currently, what we have just finished was history of theater, um, how we even got to where we are in, in the theater world, um, learning about different types of stages, also how productions are created. Um, we've just started to dip our toe into stage management, too. Um, but this next level, what I'd really like to do with Stagecraft 2 is, you know, I have the kids that have repeated the class that they're the core kids that are the ones that are doing the lighting and the sound for the productions. I'd like to have an even larger group of students that are able to do that, and even not even just necessarily for our school, for Alhambra High School, for our productions. I would like them to be able to go out into our community, do even more at the junior high level, even our elementaries if they need, um, if they're having events, that our students could come help run the events, but also, have internships with uh, like Lesher Center. Um, in fact, we have one of my current students is just starting an internship with the costumer at the Le Lesher Center. Mm -hmm. And also I'd like to do even more with expanding what we can do with like the community theater here at the Campbell. Um, I know some of our students do some work with Poison Apple Productions outside of our school. Um, so Right now we're still in the beginning stages of learning all about theater production and we've done a lot, like some of the, um, the posters right behind me that I put up last week are created by the kids. So they're also learning, um, um, you know, advertising for our productions. Um, like we're learning color theory, we're learning how to, um, 
create an actual program for them to have at the productions for our shows, um, even our banners, um, everything that we, we learn for um, our arts management. And then next, so we, we have the actual putting on the production. Our town does not have a lot of like props, but we just announced our musical, which is Pirates of Penzance in the spring which has tons of props. So the kids are gonna learn that next too as well, like how to make these props, um, how to build a pirate ship, <laughs> uh, things like, uh, and also a lot more with costumes because our town does not have a lot of costumes. We're still just learning all the basics. So moving on to Stagecraft 2, I'm sorry, I'm like piling a bunch of information in, but moving into Stagecraft 2, just being able to do even more, like a higher level, um, even higher level building our sets, and then also doing a lot more in the community. It's a lot. It's great, though. Sounds very exciting. Thank you. Sarah, thank you. And uh, Amy, thank you. Uh, I guess question on, obviously, as a CTE, we're you know kind of preparing kids and, and that, that next move. And I'm trying to um, figure out how, you know, again, using our, our relationship with the city, Thinking mm -hmm. about the waterfront amphitheater mm -hmm. and you know, there's the the weekly uh, uh, shows and events, you know, bands and things downtown. Trying to figure out what's, um, how can we help? How can we bridge that gap and make a a, a pathway or you know, a, somewhere to end up for the students making this, you know, a CTE and a mm -hmm. and development. What 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 does that look like? I guess to you, uh, my biggest, what I would love to see, and I know they just regained control of the John Muir Amphitheater um, and possibly making that into an actual venue again. I know it's been several, several years that that's been a venue. But my other my other interest is really having a relationship with the Campbell Theater. Um, I, I do know some of the people at the Campbell Theater, but giving our students more opportunities to go um, intern and learn how to run their lighting system, their sound system, um, or even uh, their marketing. Um, but also, I mean, you and I had discussed a little bit about that opportunity of, especially with like the music scene in Martinez is so hot and happening. It's lovely. It's amazing. And I know that there is, um, with the city of Martinez, I, I've worked a little bit with some of, some of the folks through the city, you know, like they do the holiday parade. Um, and there's, um, and I can't remember this. She's actually a, a mom, Clap, Clapperich. I think is her name, does does a lot of events with the city. And I would love to create that relationship, you know, really plan on how can our kids be involved in more of the, the events with downtown Martinez, with Main Street Martinez, at things that they're doing, be it the holiday parade, be it um, um, some of the other things that they're doing in downtown. You know, so, you know, they're having that, the first Fridays, the first, the art Fridays, all that sort of stuff. So they could learn they could try to get into those, learning those different skills, especially like the marketing and, and all of that. It could just definitely ties into everything that we're doing through the CTE, through Stagecraft and arts management. But also the lecture, like I was saying. And then um, I actually have a relationship with the, the technical director at DVC for their theater production um, company. So um, really seeing how our kids could get involved there too. I just want to say um, I love your enthusiasm for it, and it sounds wonderful. And I'm looking forward to um, you know seeing that progress and um, hopefully uh, get some more contact with the city, um, mm -hmm. and then also like chamber of commerce and do some stuff like that. So let us know what we can do to help. Thank you. Yeah, it started off as a club, and we'd work weekends oh my and God, nights, awesome. and so it's just an amazing opportunity to have it as a class. And then in and the class that I got to take last spring about making it the CTE pathway and continuing and how to make that that work connection for the students and just giving them those opportunities like those chances to just really experience it as a job I mean even hire them at the junior high I, I had a, a former stagecraft kid who over I think it was last summer worked worked at the junior high for some group that had like six different rap concerts that he got to go work at so that's give them awesome. those chances, yeah. Yeah, and there's so much you can learn, like you said, marketing. I mean, there's so many things that are um, combined to that. So Costuming, awesome. makeup, I mean, right. everything. Stage management, all of it, yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic, fun world. 
stressful world. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Amazing, though. Yeah. Thank you. But I do want to also commend you on, on this. I mean, it is a it, it is a differentiator, I think, for the district and and um, an offering to the to the greater community. So yeah, in fact, one of the CAC members said he wished he had it at his school, um, and he puts on huge productions at his high school that he works at as a as a parent. He massive productions, and he wishes he had stagecraft as a class. So, I'm incredibly blessed in Martinez. Really blessed. Thank you for all your hard work and thank you, Amy. Do we have any public comment? Okay, so we'll uh, bring this back to the next meeting for approval. Um, the next item for discussion and information is the approval of the request to permanently increase the daily rate of pay for substitute teachers. So this is an information item that I'll bring back at the next board meeting. On October 4th, 2022, the board had approved an increase uh, in substitute rates, uh, which had not happened for perhaps decades. Um, and what we're asking is to make those increases permanent. Uh, while the amounts are the same, the verbiage has changed a little bit from what you approved in October. Um, this, at the rate, this at the suggestion of our uh, payroll uh, staff. Uh, daily rate of 220, long-term rate of 250 is the exact same thing you approved last year. You then approved a $20 stipend for um, SDC, uh, for those subs going into SDC courses. And, and the payroll office told us they wanted to keep the amount the same but not call it a stipend anymore. So it'll say the SDC daily rate will be 240, uh, which is 20 above the daily rate. And the SDC long-term rate will be 270, which is 20 above the long-term rate. Um, so I'll be bringing that back for approval at the next board meeting. Okay. And I'd be glad to answer any questions if there are any questions. Yeah, thank you. Do we have any questions? No. I was just curious. I know we had a math teacher recently resign, and then we had someone else out sick. Is, has it, was it easy and quick to get some substitute teachers for those math classes because of this, do you think? Or what was... Just curious what your thoughts are. I mean, I think it's it's great, and we need to have the substitute teachers because you know we don't want other teachers to kind of come in and fill. We want people that are you know qualified that can do it. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. So the um, the, the the math teacher issue you were talking about, we were able to find uh, some substitutes. Um, I, I think the sub issue really played out last year countywide. Uh, Mount Diablo was the first district to, to increase their rates and then everybody else in the county increased their rates because uh, within a week all the substitutes started flocking <laughs> to Mount Diablo which was paying $100 more than everyone else. So then everyone else did the same thing like us uh, in Martinez and, and now no one's going back down because there still is a, a shortage of substitutes in Contra Costa. And none of us want to lose the access to the substitutes we have. In fact, I would say we're all hungry to uh, find more substitutes to come into the system. Um, so keeping this, these rates the way uh, that you approved last year will help us to continue to do that. Thank you. Any public comment? OK, well, we'll bring this back to the next meeting also. OK, item number 13. Dr. Scudero again, um, approval of a revised job description for office manager, and this is an action item. That's correct. So as a result of the uh, reclassification committee meeting last spring, uh, the district was encouraged to review the structure and consider updating the office manager job description, even though the reclassification was voted down by the reclassification committee. Um, CSEA leadership and the district work collaboratively to update the office manager job description, which will result in moving four elementary office school managers, one middle school office manager, one continuation school office manager, and one adult education office manager from range 38 to range 39. This will result in an estimated $10,000 cost of the general fund and $2,000 for adult education. Staff recommends that the board approves a memorandum of understanding with CSEA to update the office manager job description. And we had a presentation on this at our last meeting, I believe. Are there any additional comments or questions? 
No, okay, we'll take public comment. Okay, um, well, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the revised job description. I'll second. Okay. Um, Mayor Sultan vote on this, yes? Student vote? Aye. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes, thank you. And you're up again, number two, 13.2. Martinez so Adult Education Paracy Indian Education Job Description. Thank you. So CSEA leadership in the district worked collaboratively to modify the original Typus Code 3 job description with new language focused on the specific work with the Title VI grant for American Indian education. Uh, this new job description language will be applied to one position funded by the Title VI grant there's no additional cost to the district. Staff recommends that the board approve the memorandum of understanding with CSEA to create the Typist Clerk Three American Indian Education job description. Okay. Any comments or questions? Okay. Any public comment? Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve the uh, Paracy Indian Education Job Description as presented. Seconded. Okay. Student vote? Aye. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We don't need item 14 because we didn't have any comments from the public. Um, item 15, uh, comments from student super, excuse me, superintendent, board members, and future agenda items. But I'll start with Mayor Saul if you have anything. Um, I hope I, I hoped everyone really liked the high school rally, and I'm gl so glad that we got to have like parents and family come. I got a, I got a really good. Like the yearbook got amazing pictures of the family. We got the family involved in a tug of war game. I don't know if you enjoyed it, Mrs. Ellen Rossi. Yeah, we we were debating on if we wanted to do it a certain way, and we were hoping no one fell into the bleachers. But once I saw it was angled, and I was yeah. right at the end of that angle, I'm like, um, I was with a friend who was on crutches. I said, I'm really sorry to bail on you, but I'm going over there. Well, we got parents involved, and you know, seniors had to take the win this time, and I'm very happy we did. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say. Great, thank you. So um, just wanted to thank everybody for the amazing work they did on Friday. That refinery incident was scary. It was a hot day. And um, I, I want to commend everybody on how quick they responded and got notifications out and were out on sites checking for the coke dust and how quickly we were to, able to assess that the parade could go on. I know that in my household, we were nervous, and I was nervous about letting my kids go to the parade because of the incident. Um, so getting the notification that we were okay was a relief. Um, I think Courtney and I should meet regarding what steps to take next, um, because it seems like these refineries are ongoing, and what we're doing is great, but I think we could do more. So um, we'll meet and discuss what we can do as the committee regarding that. So um, the ad hoc committee that we put together for the refinery incident is, um, I, I wish Annie was here because I've explained all this to Annie. She could probably, oh, Courtney, you know, doesn't, I didn't explain it to Courtney. When you make an ad hoc committee to look at an incident, you look at them one, that one particular incident and you report back and then it's over. So if we want to take a look at these other incidents, we have to create another ad hoc committee to look at the incident that happens and then report back to the board. There's no, um, there's no um, direction given by the ad hoc committee. They just simply go and gather information and then come back and report it, is my understanding. I'm gonna check on, um, I know that it's not an action committee, it's just a, a report back committee, but I wanna check on how long they can be in effect. I'm pretty sure from what I read, it can only be for the incident that it was created for. And that would be for the, um, what was the first thing that? Last Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, the, the dust 
it wasn't the coke dust it was the the big release that we had and whether or not it impacted the soils and so on and so forth so i'll do that research and put it in the weekly update this week mm -hmm. um and put the documentation of where i got it from but that's my understanding so we're all learning okay and then maybe depending on what you find out we could talk about maybe if we want to we convene a new committee or something like that. Right. And I will talk to Annie. We meet every Wednesday and then it we'll talk about putting it on the agenda and so on and so forth. And okay. That would be fine. Okay. I just want to say, um, yeah, great job on communicating for that. And um, congratulations again to the Alhambra high school. They just killed the game. It was awesome. <laughs> so um, that was great. And I heard the homecoming dance was also phenomenal. So um, lots of activity there and, um, uh, it was great, so that's pretty much it. Uh, one of the things we can't, didn't talk about and uh, was able to participate on uh, last Saturday, or Saturday before last, was the MEF run, and just recognize MEF for the uh, the money that they collected. I think this year was about 101000 that they collected, and all of it goes to uh, teachers of the district for different programs and, and facilities. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to recognize them, and also, uh, Vera Montez for her design and for the new t for the t-shirt for this year. She did a great job. And I believe she is the salutatorian or valedictorian for this year. I'm pretty sure she's going to be the valedictorian. Valedictorian. Okay. She's a pretty high GPA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, thank you, Sarah, for the birthday wishes on Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, I'm busy couple of weeks. We had a lot of stuff going on, lots of people working really hard. So thank you, everybody. And that's you. Do you have anything to add, Helen? Yeah, I just wanted to just um, put this out here. As we approach the um, <clears throat> the ending of our CARES funding, the the remaining um, funds that we were given to uh, for learning loss and for a variety of reasons through COVID, um, we have to take a look at how those reductions may impact our current, we're staffing, we're 86% staffing, so there's an impact there. And um, other things that have been funded for the past three years with this money, now that the money will be decreasing next year again, and then pretty much gone by the year after. So in talking with Annie, I'm just planting a seed for tonight. Um, a, we want to look at a, a board workshop day. We only have one meeting in December, maybe a, a, a workshop uh, put on by our business department in what is actually funded in by those funds and how, um, how and look at possibly ways to keep some of those positions. And, and because, you know, if we keep any, we have to, to, if we, if we uh, keep any positions, we have to take a look at our general funding and other funds that we have and manipulate those things we have. So just like I tell anybody, if you want something new, we've got to take something away. So we knew, and I've been very vocal in every presentation that I have given since 2020, March, um, when you buy things with one-time money and that money goes away, so do the things, unless we figure out... Um, how to to switch the funding sources which means take those fundings from else take those funds from elsewhere and and maybe stop doing some of the other things we're doing so just start to throw around dates on your calendar and look and see and uh, i will speak to annie on wednesday about how she wants to go about uh, scheduling that whether we put something out to see what the best dates are or you guys tell us the dates that you can't because I know with December comes holiday parties and and different family functions that you might not be available for so we the reason we're we're selecting December is because if it does impact staffing we have a deadline that we have to meet uh, through ed code um, which that process begins at the end of January so we have to have time to be able to put all this together. And Andy has to be, have time to be able to figure out the funding pieces of it. So, okay. So we'll be coming back to you with a date for December. So start to kind of take a little peek. Okay. And on that happy note, I will. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you for my uh, my first time leaving the meeting being short, and uh, we will adjourn. 